Ah, that was a terrible intro. Let's try that again. <laughs> no, that's a terrible intro. Can't do that one. Let me try again. What is up, Robo? What's up, everybody? I'm in big camera mode. I got the ring light on full blast, and I'm ready to jump in. So let's do it. What matters most, precision or recall? I feel like this is a question I get all the time. So it's time to make a video about it. Okay. Precision, recall, what do these things mean? Why do I value them? When should I value them? And why? That's what we're gonna be jumping into. So let's start by providing a couple of example situations. Now remember, the numbers on your model are relative and they only matter in conjunction to a problem they are solving. So we need to have some problems to solve. Let's look through two examples here. Situation number one, I have a leaky pipe detector. And by that, I mean I'm detecting leaks on pipes. In this case, if there is a leak on a pipe, I should detect that leak. Situation number two, cat is pooping on my toilet detector. You might be thinking, that is an oddly specific situation to, to be building a detector for. And the answer is, that is because a awesome RoboFlow Universe contributor has actually made a data set specifically for this case. Details in the description, and we're going to be rolling with it. So situation two, I have a detector that will detect if my cat has pooped in my bathroom. And if it has, it's going to flush the toilet two minutes after detection. So with that said, let's understand in these situations, do I value precision or recall? Because maybe let's add another hypothetical later on here. I can only tune for one. I'm a venture-backed AI startup. I only have time to do one or the other, but not both. So with that said, let's take a look here at how we evaluate the performance of my detections. So let's start with the first case. So we have three cases that we're gonna be walking through here. True positive, false positive, and false negative. You might be wondering, hey Jay, where's true negative? I will talk about that in a sec. It's kind of a weird one. So I like to wait and hold that one out for last. Okay, evaluation considerations. True positive, what is a true positive? Notice here, I have my leaky pipe detector. This red box represents my detecting bounding box. There is a leak and I have successfully detected the leak. True positive. The thing I'm looking for happened and I detected it successfully easy. Second, false positive. Let's say that I'm drawing a random bounding box here in this black square. That means that my model thinks that this black square is a leak. That's bad. There is no leak there, but it thinks it does see a leak. That's a false positive. So moving backwards, one more step. Notice here, I am detecting this leak successfully, true positive, but there's this even bigger leak over here to the right that I'm missing. So there is a leak happening and I'm missing it. That is a false negative. A leak is occurring and I'm missing it. Very bad. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, what is the true negative? True negative is a strange one. It means that no leak is occurring and I am not drawing a bounding box around it. So for example, these black spaces here, there are no bounding boxes, there are no leaks. Those are true negatives. We typically ignore those because it's a strange evaluation metric to build off of. So with that said, we got our evaluation metrics. Let's dive bah, 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 down into precision and recall. All right, precision and recall, how do they work? Straightforward enough, it's a math formula. Precision is represented as true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at it from a math perspective, what it's saying is that as the number of false positives increase, the rate of precision decreases because the dividend grows. Let's look at an example. Let's say I have 10 true, pulse, true positives and two false positives. In that case, I would have 10 true positives divided by 10 plus two is 12, which would equal a rate of 83% precision. That's pretty good. It's saying that we are dealing with a low number of false positives. 
let's instead say of having two false positives, I have 100 false positives now. Well, the rate of false positives is large. Therefore, our precision is going to be very low. So if I have 100 false positives, I will have a precision rate of 9% which is very bad. It's telling me my model, my model sucks at correctly detecting the thing I'm trying to detect. And recall is very similar, but instead of dealing with false positives, we're tracking false negatives. So as the number of false negatives increase, we come back up here, as the number of those missed detections when something happens, but I miss it, increases, our recall decreases. And so in summary, we can kind of think of precision and recall as this. Precision represents the rate at which my detections are most likely going to be true positives, aka how often my model's detections are correct. And recall represents if I have a detection, is it right or wrong? That's how I like to think about it. Try not to think about it too hard because if I think about it too hard, I'll start to mix them up in my brain. So just uh, kind of just let it sit in your brain on a surface level as we dive into some example use cases. Okay, what matters most, precision or recall? I am going to break this down with a simple explanation now. Okay. So I can only value one or the other. Am I going to value precision or recall? I only have enough time to tune it up. The question we have to answer is, what costs more? Does a false positive do more damage or does a false negative do more damage? So with that in mind, let's review the situation and figure out, do we value precision or recall based on the value of that cost? So let's say I have my, my pipe here and this pipe is not pumping water, it's pumping liquid gold, it's my honey pipe. So if the honey pipe starts to leak and I miss it, right, I am going to be in a heap of trouble because my honey pipe is leaking and I have completely missed out and there's honey everywhere, maybe there's damage to my pipes, there's damage to my furniture, everything is destroyed. So if this pipe leaks, I better catch it. So a false negative is big damage. And if it's a false positive, if it thinks there's a leak and there is no leak, well, that's not a big deal, right? Nothing is damaged. Maybe I have to pop open my cupboard, take a look in there and see what's going on for a minute. But all I have to do is check it. So if there's a false positive, no damage besides times. So a five second time. Not bad. In this case, if I have to choose between valuing five seconds of my time being wasted or losing a bunch of my sweet elixir, then I am going to value a low false negative rate more than a low false positive rate. And so if I want a low false negative rate, means I'm emphasizing recall. Things I'm gonna want in my model, more augmentations, um, a few more representations of things. Deets on how to tune recall are in the blog. So let's instead jump over to the second situation now. And you may have figured this out. It's going to be an inverse, spoiler alert, of the pipe situation. So here we have a cat pooping. What happens if I get a false positive? What happens if I get a false negative? And what are the costs? <clears throat> so false positive. False positive means that the model thinks there is a cat, but there is no cat. So <laughs> I'm putting my hand over the screen, but you can't, you can't actually see that. So pretend this cat is not here. So there is no cat, but my model thinks there's a cat. What happens? Well, if there is no cat there and my toilet flushes, I might waste water. My utility bill goes up. And in a worst case situation, my toilet is flushing as my toilet trained cat comes into the bathroom and it freaks the cat out and it doesn't poop and it walks away. 
So false positive has big damage. Now, what happens if there's a false negative? False negative, it thinks that, I'm sorry, it misses the cat pooping, right? So the cat goes into the toilet, or on the toilet, <laughs> not in the toilet, and we miss the cat. So the cat does its business and it walks away and we never detected it. Well, in that case, there's going to be a little bit of sneaky cat poop in the toilet, but that's not a big deal because I can just walk in there and I can just flush it and you know maybe you have to deal with a little bit of a bad smell for a moment but no big damage right maybe bad smell so in this case false positives are what we are trying to minimize so if we want to minimize the false positive what are we doing we are aiming for a high precision rate which means most likely less augmentations and a few other tips and tricks so with that said Hopefully now you understand the difference between precision and recall and when to optimize for one or the other given a lack of limited time and other resources. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.